Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome to another episode of Vehicles of War Thunder. In this part we will be covering the Cruiser Tank Mark III or as it is known in War Thunder and its general staff specifications, the A13 Mark I. I do want to mention that this will be the last episode in which I plan to select the next vehicle. Uh, the idea is that you guys will be voting on what will be covered in the next two episodes. However, I will go into more detail on that later in this episode. But let's go ahead and get down to business. The A13 Mark I, as I will refer to it throughout this video, hails from the Empire where the sun never sets, the United Kingdoms. This tank was manufactured by Nuffeld Mechanizations and Aero Limited. In 1936, Lieutenant General Gifford Le Cazin Martel, whose name I probably butchered, who had, many who had published works on armored warfare and pioneered the concept of the lightly armored tankette, became the assistant director of mechanization at the war office. Later that year, Martel witnessed a demonstration of Soviet tank designs, and most notably, the BT series tanks, which had been influenced by J. Walter Christie's work. After that demonstration, Martel urged the adoption of the Christie suspension and Christie's practice of using a lightweight aircraft engine such as the Liberty engine. The government authorized the purchase and license, licensing of a Christie design via the Nuffeld organization, rather than contact the Soviets. The vehicle obtained from Christie became the basis of the A-13, however it had to be redesigned by Morris Commercial Cars because it was too small and had several faults that Christie had not addressed. So a new company called Nuffield Mechanization and Aero Limited was formed for the development and production of the A-13. During a meeting of the General Staff Office specific the General Staff official specifications were determined, which included a 30mm of armor, a 40mm 2-pounder gun, and a road speed of 48 km an hour. A review of the specifications by Martel and Percy Hobart approved 30 mm of armor all around provided cross-country speed could be kept at 40 km an hour. Pending the delivery of the A-13, interim designs were made from the A-7, A-9, and A-10, with the A-9 being selected. Orders of that tank were limited pending the arrival of the A-13. The first prototype was delivered in October 1937. Following the testing of two prototypes, the A-13 was ordered into production with an order of 50 tanks, later extended to 65 tanks. The A-13 weighed 14.2 metric tons, had a crew of four, a commander, gunner, loader, and driver, a 340 horsepower Nuffield Liberty V-12 petrol engine, and a top speed of 48 kilometers an hour and was armed with an Ordnance QF-2 Pounder main gun and a 303 Vickers machine gun. When the tank was introduced into service, the Army still lacked a formal tank division. Delivery started in December 1938. Now I've got a couple of pictures here that will be going up over the next, I guess, about a minute or so max. Plans for a revised version are, had already started and the only variant devised was the standard close support CS equipped with a 96 mm mortar firing smoke rounds. These proved to be useless in real combat, who would have thought, so the crews quickly rushed to replace them with HE shells. This is actually a tank I wouldn't mind seeing in War Thunder just for the hell of it. Uh, the A-13 first saw action with the British Expeditionary Forces 1st Armored Division in May 1940. Many were lost during engagements with German armor due to their lack of protection and the rest were abandoned at Dunkirk. Others were part of the 7th Armored Brigade and participated in the early desert campaign in Libya and Operation Crusader 1940-1941, counting for half of its force. Some were transferred to Greece and lost there. Apparently none have survived to this day. Now, as for what I think of this tank, I personally am not the biggest fan of it. Though this mostly has to do with it being a fairly poorly armored tank in comparison to the penetration power of what it goes up against. And it also being limited to equipping either standard armor piercing rounds or armor piercing capped ballistic capped. And to my understanding, 
the APCVC does not have an explosive filler in this tank, so it won't explode after penetrating uh, an enemy vehicle. While take the Panzer Kampfwagen 35T for example, a tank that this tank will fight on a fairly regular basis in War Thunder, or at least in theory it should fight that tank on a fairly regular basis, since both are reserve tanks, which also has an AP CBC round. However, in the case of the Panzer Kampfwagen 35T, it has 13 grams of PETN as its explosive filler. So an AP CBC round fired by a Panzer Kampfwagen 35T will explode after penetrating a vehicle. In short, because the round fired by this tank doesn't explode, this tank will have a somewhat hard time knocking out the crew members of an enemy tank. And it doesn't help that Gaijin had added in the last man standing mechanic, making it even harder for this tank to actually get kills. Though Gaijin recently decided as of this recording to remove last man standing from realistic and simulator battles, which to my understanding was only in those game modes anyway until they can make it work. Here's hoping they never get it working, because I personally hated the mechanic. Honestly, if I was given a choice between driving this tank or a Panzer Kampfwagen 35T, I would pick the Panzer Kampfwagen 35T 99.9% .9 of the time, simply because to me it'll have an easier time killing enemy tanks, and will thus be more useful to its team and the person driving it. Also, after looking at the ammo types that British tanks have in this game, I have to say, I don't think I'll be enjoying them very much. I could not find a single British tank that fired around with, ex with an explosive filler. Most only had AP, AP CBC, and later APDS, which I have not had the opportunity to use in any form, so maybe it'll be fine. But the lack of explosive filler does turn me off from British tanks. Now, as for selecting the topic of the next two episodes, I will have two straw poll links in the description. One will be for selecting the next tank that I cover, and the other will be for selecting the next plane that I cover. I ask that you select one tank on the tank poll and one plane on the plane poll. That will determine what I do cover in the, what I cover in the next two episodes. The polls will last until the end of the month when I will tally up the votes and start doing research on the two vehicles and recording footage for them. Whichever one I have an easier time fighting data for and recording gameplay for will be the one that gets released first. For the plane, I'll select one plane from each nation and as for the tanks, I will list one from each nation though since Japan doesn't currently have a tank tree and I want to give you all five choices, I will include two tanks from one of the other four nations. For example, for this poll, I may list two American tanks, but for the next, I may list two German tanks, and for the one after that, two Soviet tanks, etc., until the Japanese have their own tank tree, which may or may never happen, we'll see. That is all I have to say for this episode, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Vehicles of War Thunder, and if you did, um, if you are able to, I would appreciate it if you were able to support me directly via Patreon, I will have a link in the description to that. Uh, there is no requirement for you to do so, however, it is, as I said, appreciated. Uh, let's see. The money from Patreon will be used to buy new games, computer hardware, etc, etc. Basically, just anything I could get to hopefully improve the content on the channel and the variety of the content that goes up on the channel. And for as little as $5 a month, you can get 24 hour early access to videos in this series and any other special series that I may start down the road, along with your name in the credits for the aforementioned series. But until next time, as always, like, favorite, comment, subscribe, share, and I will see you guys next time. But until then, goodbye and farewell.